I believe it was the great Dizzy Gillespie who said, if the butthole ain't tight, you will not win the fight. When you're playing high notes, think about having a quarter between your butt cheeks, and don't make change. We've all been there when we're trying to play our high notes on the trumpet, and they just don't want to come out. My name's Freddie. I play trumpet with the Lakes Brass Quintet. I'm a trumpet teacher here in Nashville. I've got my master's degree in trumpet pedagogy, and I've had every embouchure problem you could probably have, and I've worked through it. In fact, back in July, I was in the hospital because my jaw locked, and now I'm back in trumpet rehab, and I want to teach you guys some of the things I've noticed in my playing and my students' playing that's inhibiting my ability and their ability to get up into the upper register. So I'm in trumpet rehab, and what I'm working on right now is I'm finally back up playing comfortably to my high C, and I'm working on trying to get above that with that flexibility, that comfort, and not straining myself. We've all heard to play in the high register, we need our tongue arch, we need that compression from down here in our abs, and we need our corners to be nice and firm. And you might be saying to yourself, Freddie, I'm doing all those things already. I still can't play these high notes. That's why I'm gonna tell you my three things that I've noticed in my playing and my students playing that's keeping them from getting into that upper register. Tip number one, you're tensing your upper lip when you play. When you play the trumpet, we wanna keep our corners firm, but our lips relaxed and flexible. Our top lip is actually our primary source of vibration when we play the trumpet. Our bottom lip only kind of vibrates sympathetically. This one's gonna vibrate a whole lot. But a lot of times when we breathe on the trumpet, we tend to stretch out that upper lip because we think it's going to help us play these high notes. It's not going to help you play those high notes. We want that lip to be nice and relaxed so that it can vibrate as we go higher and higher on our instrument. To fix this problem, I want to use what we call the Darth Vader breath. I'm going to take a nice inhale like I'm breathing like Darth Vader. When I take that breath, it does a lot of things for my playing. For one, it relaxes my throat muscles and allows me to fill up with a lot of air. If we breathe like, or, and you can hear the breath, that means there's something in the way in your throat stopping that air from coming in and it's gonna stop that air from coming out. The Darth Vader breath actually helps us keep this top lip relaxed. Notice how my lips are gonna be nice and round when I take that breath. I'm not but I'm relaxed and I have a nice circle. That's gonna help my lip vibrate in my low notes and my high notes. To practice our Darth Vader breath, we're going to do our long tones. My favorite set of long tones, I like the Vincent Chickowitz flow studies, but you can do whatever long tone you like. What you wanna focus on if you have a mirror or if you have your phone camera, you wanna look at your lips as you're taking that breath and letting that air out. So that's tip number one, the Darth Vader breath. Tip number two, you are probably playing with way too much mouthpiece pressure. That's when we take our mouthpiece on our trumpet and we jam it into our lip to try to make the high notes come out. Now there's a scientific basis to this because in order to play our high notes, what we need to do is get a really teeny tiny aperture. That's the hole that your lips make that actually vibrates when you're playing the trumpet. To make that teeny tiny aperture in theory, we have to have really strong, really firm corners. Our corner muscles get tired kind of quickly. So at the end of long gigs, a lot of trumpet players, when these muscles are tired, find the quick way to make that aperture nice and small is to jam the mouthpiece into the lips, smushing them. Here's the problem. Your top lip can only take so much of a beating. I ask my students, all the time, do you feel the burn here or do you feel the burn here? Nine times out of 10, they say they feel the burn here. And that's when I say it's time to start working on developing these corner muscles to support you in all registers of the trumpet. There are a lot of ways that you can work on building up your corners and reducing that mouthpiece pressure. 
the best exercise that I've ever learned to build up my corners, I learned from one of my earliest trumpet teachers, uh, the late Dr. Gary Feinberg from the College of New Jersey. We're going to take our trumpet essential, Herbert L. Clark's technical studies for the cornet. And we're going to look at Clark II today. Now, as we work through Clark II, I'm going to keep my corners engaged the whole time. To do this, I'm going to be breathing through my nose. Should you breathe through your nose in rehearsal? No! Should you breathe through your nose in a concert? No! Should you breathe through your nose for this exercise? Yes! Because it's going to help keep those corners engaged. So in, instead of breaking the seal here by breathing through our mouth, we're going to keep those corners engaged and breathe through our nose. I will give myself one measure between the study I played and the one I'm about to play, where I can maybe move my mouthpiece a bit, take some pressure off, but those corners are still going to be engaged. I breathe through my nose, and I play the next study. It should look something like this. Once you've worked down from F to your low G scale, go from F up to the C scale and see if you can keep those corners engaged. You're going to be getting up to that G. Try to do that G without any mouthpiece pressure. The final trumpet tip that I've got for you to open up that upper register is think about your notes being in front of the trumpet, not up here in the stratosphere. If we think about blowing through the trumpet and your high notes are being further away from your bell as opposed to being up here, we eliminate a lot of tension that we carry right here in our throats. To work on blowing through the horn and blowing further beyond our bell, I have an exercise for you from Jake's Method, a method book by Don Jake Jacoby. Uh, it's a hard book to get your hands on, but if you can find it, I highly recommend it because he's got a lot of interesting trumpet pedagogy takes in there. We're going to take a G scale. And as we go up our G scale to the top of the staff, we don't want to think that we're reaching up for those high notes. Jacoby says, think like you're blowing half a foot further out every time you go up to another note. As I'm going higher, yes, my tongue's going to arch into that E position that we've all heard about. But instead of thinking blowing up this way, I'm thinking about blowing out that way. That's going to help our sound carry. Notice how as I went up that scale, my sound was nice, open, ringing, that characteristic trumpet sound that we want. If instead I were thinking about playing my notes up here, I'm going to get all this tension in my neck and it's going to stop that nice ringing sound that we had. It's going to sound forced and strained and stuffy and we don't want that. Here's how that sounds. Notice that the top G when I was thinking up here didn't have the same ring as that G when I played thing blowing through my trumpet. It sounds nasally. It sounds tight. It sounds bad. So with these three tips, your Darth Vader breath, strengthening up those corners, avoiding that mouthpiece pressure, and blowing through your trumpet, thinking that your notes are further out that way and not up here, you should be able to open up that upper register. But you got to actually practice. So go click off this video. Maybe drop a like if you thought it was fun. But you got to go practice. We'll see you in the next one. Go practice. Practice. Do it. Practice. We did a multicam so I could yell at you at this one too. <laughs>